What up chums, how you doing? It's Friday! Time for a filler. This week, I'm gonna cover waders and boots and wet wading. It's a bit early for wet wading yet, but I will cover that seeing as people have been asking me. I had heaps of you asking me about what waders I use, what boots I use, um, and that kind of stuff. So I thought I would answer that question this week. Just getting ready to go for a cheeky little swing-a-ding-ding. -ding. Become slightly obsessed with this at the moment. It's pretty good fun. If you haven't tried it, you probably should. All right, so I've used a lot of waders over the years, and the general thing with waders is no matter what pair I tend to buy, I will trash them in a couple of months. Just the kind of fishing that I do, um, means a lot of bush bashing, a lot of scrambling around, a lot of falling over, thick bush, and just kind of a lot of gorse, a lot of blackberry, a lot of brambles, so you know, just stuff gets trashed. And that's the very reason why I will never buy a $1,500 pair of waders, because I will trash them. And I'll go through two pairs a year, same as any other pair, and I can't afford that. So basically what I'm looking for in a pair of waders is something that's reasonably priced, not cheap, not it's super expensive, but kind of in that middle, that middle area, that, you know, that kind of middle of the road kind of price bracket. What I need is super hard wearing, comfortable and functional basically. And they kind of have to look good too, because I'm shallow like that. I know nothing's going to last me a long time, like I won't get a year out of a pair of waders no matter what they are. So what I'm looking for is just the longest period of time I can stay dry in a pair of waders without them leaking. And I think I've found those. What I've been using for the best part of the last year are these Reddington ones. Um, and these, these are the Reddington Sonic Pro HD, Sonic HD Pro, something like that. They're kind of like that middle of the range waiter. It's not the super cheap ones and it's not their really expensive kind of zippery ones. What I've found with these is straight at the box are super comfortable so far they are as hard wearing as any other waiter i've found and they look pretty cool too you know they've got your usual pockets on the outside a waterproof one an inside one and like a mesh one on the front you know pretty standard so that's what i've been running waiter wise so i just bought a bunch of the palex waders and the skagit boots for clients for this season coming up and um they look really really good value for money by the looks of it. Uh, initial reports back from the clients that I've given them to so far say they're super comfortable and they seem to be shaping up to be a good investment. So if you're just getting into something and you don't want to spend a shit ton of money, they seem to be a pretty good option to look at. I'll keep you updated as the season goes on as to how they stand up to the abuse. All right, boots. So I've been running recently these Orvis um, Pro Guide, Guide Pro, or this Guide Pro boots. I haven't had these long, like a month or so, but they could be, no, nay. These are the most comfortable boots I have ever put on my feet. Like out the box, straight up, like a glove. So, so comfortable. This sole is, um, they've kind of done something to do with Michelin, which are the tire guys. And these are really, really grippy. As you'll notice, I don't wear studs in the bottom of my boots. Kind of got out the habit of wearing studs, just don't like the noise they make. And I've kind of got used to just wading without them. And these are by far the grippiest rubber sole boots I've found yet. Cool colors, super wicked. I love this, I love these um, lace thingies. I don't know what you call these, what do you call these? Anyway, I love these, they look super cool. I basically feel like Darth Vader when I put these on. And it's early days. But if these end up standing up to the abuse I give them like I think they're going to, these will be by far the best boots I've ever worn. Again, I'll keep you posted on that, but I'm in love with them right now. If I could wear them all the time, I probably would. So yeah, that's what I'm running on the river at the moment through winter. The only thing that will change come summertime is I'll ditch the waders and I'll start wet wading as soon as I can bear it because I just don't like wearing waders. All right, I'm gonna go swing a couple of flies around, see if I can catch a fish or two, and then I'm gonna shoot home, then I'll show you those other Reddington waders and boots I got from my clients, and I'll also go through my wet wading set. Cool. All right, welcome home. 
beautiful. So I thought I'd just show you those other boots and those other waders in case you were interested and wanting to see what they look like. Cool, so these are the Payload Raiders. These are the big ones, but as you can see, they're a little bit less um, like grunty through this front section here. So not quite as hard wearing. Same sock foot. But some sort of like gruntier stuff from the knee down here if we want to lean it down, that kind of stuff. Got your basic front pocket and an inside pocket as well. They're not quite as thick as the uh, Sonic HD Pros or whatever it is, the ones that I've got. Definitely seem like a decent weight. And then, and then, uh, these are the Skagit boots. So they seem pretty sweet. Pretty standard boot, nice grunty kind of sole on them. Super comfy, nice and padded in there. So yeah, decent value for money, man. They're the other ones I've got, so yeah, should be happy clients this season. Right, next, wet wading stuff. Sweet, so I thought I'd come outside because it's kind of kind of springy, but it's cold. So, wet wading. Still too early here in New Zealand to be doing this, but I thought I'd just show you because I had a few people ask me, actually quite a lot of you asked me, just kind of like what I do. That's Irvin, going for a bit of a scout around, like a good boy. So I've dressed up. Just to show you guys what I mean. It's easier than me just talking. It's easier for me to show you. Basically, I swap between either thermal bottoms and board shorts or like long-legged pants like your Sims or your Patagonia or your Howler Brothers kind of, you know, quick drying pants. But basically, these, these are just real cheap thermal base layer pants. And these are just board shorts. I've been running the ones from Howler Brothers for the last season because I just found them and I love them. They're cool, they're hard wearing, kind of stretchy, they just fit well. But any board short will do. And then just a pair of like thick socks. And the reason we wear these thermal bottoms all the time is the water here never gets warm. It's always just fucking freezing in there. So it helps keep you warm when you're in the water. And then once you're out of the water, it helps just kind of keep you warm. You know, while you're drying out, they dry quick as well. And the other thing is it helps keep the sand flies off you and it keeps the sun off your legs. If you haven't been here, it's brutal. So we've got no ozone layer and you can just feel your skin just like, just crisping up, burning. So sun protection, bug protection, keeps you warm in and out of the water and dries real quick. Now I'll wear these under pants as well sometimes, like early or late in the season when it's a bit colder. I'll run these under those long pants as well. Generally if I'm guiding and I'm not doing like a particularly active, strenuous, scrambly around kind of river, I'll wear pants, just for something different and I like them. If I'm going on a big mission and there's gonna be a lot of walking and a lot of scrambling around and climbing and bush bashing and that kind of stuff, I'll go for like the shorts and leggings option because it's a lot easier to scramble around and you're a lot more flexible and you can move a lot easier in this kind of get up than you can in pants. Man, I just rambled on a lot about pants and thermal leggings. So then on top of that, I'll just get like your know, neoprene wet wading sock. This is the Sims one. I've run Patagonia ones. Just, they're all pretty much the same. They all do the same thing. I just run those over like that and then slam those in your boots. Mm. Yeah. So basically that just ends up being the stocking foot part of your waders and then this bit here you just pull down like so lock it in place stops all that gravel and stuff going down into your boot and then what I tend to do as well is just roll it over like that boom job done side note stroke Alex's tip of the day if you want to make sure you don't get blisters and you stay super comfortable when you're wet waiting before you put your socks on get some Vaseline and then smother your feet all over with Vaseline and then put your socks on, then put your neoprene socks on, then put your boots on. Never had a blister since. And you know what, when I was in the jungle, that was the key to not getting foot rot. I know that's not really a problem here, but that's how I came across that idea from my buddy Gene, who I was guiding with. He was using it and he got us all onto it. And from that moment onwards, there was not a bit of foot rot to deal with. And it was super comfortable, no blisters, and I've been doing that ever since. It's a nice one, Gene. That's a good tip, and I'm going to pass it on to you guys now. You're welcome. So I hope they kind of clear stuff up around that whole wet wading thing. 
So if you're looking for a pair of boots and you want to try these out, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, if you go to that and you type in the discount code TRIPPIN, T-R-I-P-P-I-N, TRIPPIN, you'll get 10% off. So, you know, if you're gonna get boots anyway and you want to try these out, save yourself 50 bucks. And if you do that, let me know what you think to the boots. Just so you know, I'm not sponsored by any of those companies and nor is Irvin here. Just use them, just like them, just recommend them. And he thinks it's great. And uh, it's a good day. That's enough rambling for one day. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys on Tuesday with a fishing video. Hope you all have a great weekend. Go fishing.